it was just so rewarding to see how excited he was and seeing him moved in and just kind of reflecting back to the rats and the squirrels and the 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 mess the filth the house had and it's like now it's exciting you know the house is great and people love it and that was just a moment for me with that's beyond the profit right my name is kevin mcintosh and this is the closing table where we talk to experts about their experience in real estate all across the country let's go Welcome back to The Closing Table. I am your host. I go by the name of Kevin McIntosh. And our guest on this episode, we will be speaking with Mr. Ryan Scully. How you doing, Ryan? Excellent. 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 Doing really well. It's Friday. Love love Fridays. Love talking to people Man. and, uh, and, and new, meeting new people. You and I have never met, so, so excited for that. Yeah, man. Always happy to meet a new friend, man. Turning strangers into friends and things of that nature, right? So we're going to shoot into it, man. But before we get started, I've been playing games with uh, our guests as of recently. Quick icebreakers. This one is called This or That. Got a few words or phrases, some of them related to real estate. But uh, I just want you to choose which one of the two, and you can explain why you chose it if you if you want to. You ready? I think. Yeah, let's have it. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. All right. All right. First one. Residential or commercial? Ooh, uh, I'll say residential. That's certainly uh, my my expertise. Um, uh, but but there's pros to both, man. But the residential, it's, it appeals to a lot more people. You can go mm -hmm. to dinner with anyone and talk residential real estate. Hmm, good response. Next, <laughs> drive or talent? I'll say drive. Um, as, as someone who's always... Uh, absolutely hustled you know it probably sounds weird to say that out loud but um you know i, I strive to be the hardest worker in the room and, and it's very rare that i'm the smartest guy in the room so <laughs> there it is all right uh we got outside renovations or inside renovations oh inside that's where you live that's what you see all the time hmm. uh, everyone loves curb appeal but you know i it's where you spend your time is inside i like that okay that's different we got one uh, <laughs> passion or discipline uh discipline i think if you're disciplined you'll you'll go much further i think uh passion um it's kind of i guess i equate that to like motivation it can be temporary where if you're disciplined you'll uh probably stay in the test of time there it is there it is last one this is this is uh most interesting one realtor or real estate agent Ooh. I guess realtor, because that's what I say. <laughs> uh, real estate agent is kind of wordy. Um, okay. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, have, I have, don't have much of an opinion on that one. Yeah, yeah. See, that's the interesting one to me because, you know, I mean, it depends on what technicalities you go off of, the definitions or whatever the case may be. So, it, all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't, I, you know, is it a facial tissue or a Kleenex, right? I, I mean, I <laughs> Uh, facts right <laughs> <laughs> all right thanks ryan man i appreciate that man just starting things off a little bit lighthearted. now let's get to know you a little bit man if you can take some time mainly probably about 60 seconds or less tell us who was ryan scully outside of real estate sure yeah uh ryan scully born and raised in in michigan um i spent a lot of time outdoors traveling uh, in the summer i spent a lot of time on the lake um, I have a super, super awesome girlfriend. Her and I like to travel and do, mm -hmm. do new things um, and uh, just kind of live uh, an active, fun lifestyle. So um, also uh, pretty active in, in my church um, and uh, looking to improve, uh, I guess, my quality of life through, through faith, too. So there it Six is. Six seconds there or less. That's, that's, that's my thought. <laughs> there it is. A man of faith, man. Got to respect that. Love it. Love it. Absolutely. All right, so you you're very knowledgeable in in, in the real estate uh, industry, man. So I, I, there's a few things I want to pick your brain about. I believe you might have spoke on this on one of your social media platforms about wholesaling. I don't think I've necessarily gotten too too deep into that on the closing table podcast. Can you explain the process of wholesaling and when can it be beneficial for someone looking to invest in real estate? Yeah, wholesaling. Um, I, uh, I I have some experience with wholesaling. Um, I, I'll say, uh, 
there are times that it's, it's super beneficial for sellers, um, but it's, it's as a real estate agent or a realtor, according to the last question, I should say, <laughs> um, I, I would say um, I'm, I'm not super big on wholesaling. I just think that as, as, a, mm. as a seller, the best opportunity is to work with a skilled real estate agent and list the property right. on the MLS and, and drive that competition. And I, I generally think as a seller, it makes sense to, uh, to, to list the house in the MLS versus work with a wholesaler. But uh, maybe I should define what a wholesaler mm. is. I think everyone knows what a, a real estate agent is, but maybe not a wholesaler. So okay. Uh, mm -hmm. a wholesaler is basically someone that's not licensed I can go out and look for, uh, I'll say deals, you know, look for houses that are, uh, off market and work mm -hmm. with the seller and come up with a price to, to purchase the home is usually cash and it's usually distressed properties. Uh, and then mm -hmm. he, he takes that contract, say that he agrees with the home seller to sell a house for a hundred thousand dollars. Now he can go out to his sphere and say, Hey guys, I will sell you guys the opportunity to buy this house for a hundred thousand uh, dollars if you give me ten thousand dollars. So effectively, if I were to buy a wholesale deal, I'd be paying one hundred ten thousand dollars for the house. Ten thousand uh, dollar assignment fee would go toward the wholesaler, and then the balance, the hundred thousand dollars, would go to the actual seller of the home. So mm. that's kind of what a wholesaler is. Whereas a real estate agent works on commission. I think we're familiar with that. Right, uh, and right. is licensed and, and it's, you know, goes through the state. It's a little bit more formal um, to sell it. You don't just use your sphere. You go on, well, you do use your sphere, but in addition to that, you know, you'll list it on the MLS and there's just a lot more tools and, and regulation with being a real estate agent. Mm, so. mm, I'm glad you clarified that. I don't know necessarily what I thought a wholesaler did. I knew it was involving, you know, kind of like, like you said, buying the opportunity and selling the opportunity to buy a house in, in some type of way. But I'm glad you explained the difference because it almost sounded like a wholesaler and a real estate agent were the same thing, minus a license. But uh, the commissions are different. The Everything else is a little bit different. So why, why, why should someone go to a real estate agent as opposed to a wholesaler? An agent's going to have access to the MLS. That's, that's where the most... Um... I'll say advertising is that's going to drive the most traffic to your house if you're a seller, which is what you want. You want a lot of people looking at it. You want the competition. You want people to, to maybe even bid people up in the last few years. We've seen a lot of that, uh, but you just, you want that traffic. Um, there are extenuating circumstances. Um, like I say, I'm, I'm generally not a huge fan of wholesaling. I have buddies that are wholesalers and I respect their business a ton and they, they do amazing work. Okay. Uh, but usually for a wholesaler, they have to negotiate a home purchase below market value and so far below market value that they can make money. And then the person buying it from them will also make money. That's right. Usually, right. So there's usually a big discount. Um, but like recently, and I'm kind of going the other way with your question now that I think about it, but um, we had a home seller that had a home in kind of disrepair and he was in a unique situation. Um, with his health, he didn't want a bunch of people through his house and the house, like I said, needed, needed a little bit of work. And he had, I'll say a week or two weeks time to sell it before he was uh, going to lose the property. So mm. a lot working, uh, working against this guy and he had a ton of equity. So he didn't want to lose the equity in the house. Um, so a wholesaler found, or he reached out to a wholesaler and said, Hey, this is my situation. A wholesaler said, I know a few people. I'm, I was one of them. I'll say, fortunately, he reached out and said, Hey, we got to close quick. Here's the situation. Here's the house. Can you know? Give me a little assignment fee, but we can help this guy out, get that equity. And Ryan, you'll get a little right. bit of a discount. You know, maybe ten percent below market value, five or ten percent below market value, mm -hmm. which is important to me as an investor. If I leave the realtor world for a second, for sure. Um, but at the end of the day, the wholesaler made a couple bucks to put food on the table. Uh, the guy that owned the property that was going through some hard times got. A lot of money, you know, several thousand dollars, you know, over thirty, forty thousand uh, dollars, and then I got a deal for a house that needed a little bit of love, and I'll go in and make it nice. And so, wholesalers do have an important role. I just think ten percent of the time it makes sense to use the wholesaler. The other ninety, the home should probably go on the MLS and sell it the traditional way. Mm, mm, that's interesting to hear. Even you say that, even for you as a real estate agent, to say even ten percent. 
would probably be make sense for a wholesaler. But okay, that's very honorable, honest of you. We appreciate that. Thanks for giving us some <laughs> insight into that. Yeah. Now, I, I know I know your lane is real estate, but mm -hmm. I, I just have this question. I want to see what you know in regards to this. Beginning May 1st, changes to the loan level price adjustments, also known as LLPAs, will cause borrowers to say see higher fees on their mortgages, while others will see fees either reduced or eliminated. Now, this is coming from National Association of Realtors.com, by the way. But how do you think these latest changes are going to affect consumers looking to refinance their homes? So in general, I'll say this is definitely a, a lender question and, and I'm not a lender I but understand. because yeah. I'm in, I'm in real estate. I know you prefaced it too, but because I'm in the business, I like to keep up to speed on, on what's going on. If people have questions for me in this, and actually I was kind of recently asked about this. Um, I'll, uh, I'll say it differently. It, it sounds kind of like we're um, penalizing people that have, good, I'll say credit ratings and, and, and down mm -hmm. payments and in a, in a better loan situation um, and, and using it to penalizing them and using that money to subsidize those that maybe don't have a lot of money to put down or have poor credit or whatever their situation is. And, and generally speaking, I, I'm against penalizing people and doing that, but I will right. also say, you know, we're, we're in a time where, um, someone could probably just use that bump, right? If we are trying to get people in houses, we all know houses are insanely expensive right now and, and, and exponentially over the last few years, that number's going up and up and up. And that's not just mm -hmm. housing, that's everything. You know, that's cars, that's uh, eggs recently, right? I mean, everything's just getting more expensive. Right. Um, but uh, but I, I, I fear a little bit that if that eighth or quarter of a percent improvement for someone that's struggling to maybe qualify for a loan mm -hmm. um, that doesn't give them much margin if they if that is enough to put them in the market I, I fear a little bit that that man margins are tight you know you're not in a position yeah. for life to happen to you and, and I fear a little mm. bit that, that that could almost have a negative impact um, every situation is different um, but you know if I take another step back and I just say common sense I don't love the idea of taking from somebody to, to someone that's doing the right things and, 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 you know, maybe that delayed gratification, they saved up for a long time. So they have more mm -hmm. down payment. Okay. Now they're being penalized because they were saving money for a couple of years in general. I'll say, I'm not a fan of that. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. Yeah. That's interesting to, to even hear that. So, I mean, on the surface level, it sounds like they're, you know, they're trying to help borrowers to who, especially borrowers who may not have the assets or the credit to actually become homeowners and obtain the American dream. But mm -hmm. on the other end, like you said, it seems like it's kind of hurting those who have been actually saving and putting in the work to put themselves in a position to actually have a home the right way, quote unquote. Yeah. I, I haven't memorized. I know there's a matrix out there. I haven't <laughs> memorized it, but it, just as a general principle, I, I don't love the idea, but I also mm -hmm. don't think, at least what I've heard, um, the percentages are dramatic. I, I don't think it's going to have a huge impact on loan pricing from, from what I understand. So I, I wouldn't stress about it. I know there's headlines out there and clickbait and stuff, but I, I haven't seen that major effect. So. Okay. Okay. Cool. I, I want to, since you already said you're you're big into investment properties and things like that, I want to talk about investment properties, the process to becoming a landlord first and foremost. But let's let's talk specifically in your market. What's the process to becoming a landlord? Well, uh, <laughs> the first step would be to to make the decision that you want to be a landlord. It's definitely a, a different lifestyle. You know, it's a certainly amount of uh, a lot of responsibility. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, comes with it a lot of time, so I would say make that make that decision that's truly what you want to do, um, right. and you're in it for the right reasons. I mean, working with people is something I love to do, and uh, and providing quality housing is is part of that, and I really do enjoy that. Um, but it comes with a lot of <laughs> a lot of stresses and and odd requests and weird things happen, and but that's that's all comes with the territory. Um, I actually mm. recently had a tenant ran into the house <laughs> with their car and it's like, didn't think I'd ever get this call. <laughs> wow. It wasn't oh, like wow. fast or anything, but it, it, you know, made a little bit. The car but... still hit a house. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's wow. just like, okay, you know, you just gotta have thick skin and now 
all right, well, I, I probably make a police report. I probably call my insurance. You just never yeah. know why your phone's going to ring, but accidents happen, man. It, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, but so make the decision, I'd say is the first thing. And then uh, learn. You want to learn a lot. You want to network with people. Read a lot of books. Um, there's podcasts galore, obviously. Um, there's all sorts of resources. There's a website called Bigger Pockets. Oh, um, yeah, I've heard of them. Yeah, yeah. They're huge. They're probably, I think, probably the biggest uh, real estate investor website out there. I, I definitely would um, recommend you, you check that out. For sure. Uh, but then you just kind of run the math and say, if I purchase this house with uh, cash or with these loan terms, you know, can I cash flow monthly? And does it does it make sense? You know, it's mm. um, say if, like for me, most of my properties have notes on them. They're you know, my debt to income on them, or I should say my uh, loan to value rather mm-hmm. is, is in a good spot, but I do have notes on them, you know? And so I just kind of run the math. If I get, you know, $1,200 a month in rental income and my bills on the house are $600 a month, in theory, that cash flows $600 a month, you know, is Correct. that, is that worth it to me to invest the money up front and to have the extra responsibility and headaches? Um, and then you just kind of make the decision or do I put it in, the stock market or whatever. Um, but I, I love working with people. I love real estate. I love uh, taking houses that are a little bit distressed and making them really, really nice and, and, and either selling them or putting uh, excited, you know, good quality tenants in them um, and just helping out. You know, it's, it's a really fun process for me. I, I enjoy it a lot. Good, good, good. Can you, do you mind sharing one of your stories of one of your most recent investment properties that you may have bought and or did some work on? Talk about the process. Yeah. Do you, I don't, doesn't matter. Do you want me to do a, a rental property or um, in the last year I've been doing a lot of flips. Mm. I, I don't know if you have a, a whichever one you feel it, whatever story you feel like is most interesting. People can learn from the most. Uh, yeah. So, um, so I, I recently got back into doing house flips. So I, I'd find a distressed property and uh, it had been neglected for many, many years and uh, had, it was dirty as can be, had rodents living in it. It was falling apart. It needed a new roof. It needed everything. And um, I actually had an investor reach out to me a couple of years prior and said he always wanted to get into uh, flipping houses. And I'd mm-hmm. sent him, a property here and there and just wasn't the right one wasn't the right one and then this one came up it was on acreage uh and uh, had a nice walkout finished basement i'll finished basement it was pretty rough but i had like pole barns and like these horse pastures and all this really neat stuff and uh, he's kind of an outdoorsy guy and that spoke to him so him and i actually teamed up on it uh purchased the property um I have a relationship with a bunch of contractors in the area and, and, and chose one and came up with a design and approach to put it together. Um, went through and cleaned the house, repaired a bunch of things, uh, really improved the property. And then uh, at the end of the day, just marketed it uh, yeah. really, really well. Got a fantastic uh, buyer. Actually, it was a VA loan, which always excites me. Um, mm. And uh, and interestingly enough, the guy that I teamed up with on it owns a uh, a company where he employs vets. And so that spoke to him too. Oh, okay. uh, and well, sold it and, um, you know, made a little bit of a profit, which is always, always rewarding. That's that's why we're in the business sure to, an, to an extent. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, it was funny because a month later, the, the new owner called me out because um, tools were left behind or something in the garage. And uh, so I went out there and it was just, he had moved in. He was loving it. He had a, uh, a kid who was riding his dirt bike around like the old horse pastures. Oh, nice. It nice. was just so rewarding to see how excited he was and seeing him moved in and just kind of reflecting back to the rats and the squirrels and the, the, the mess, the filth the house had. And it's like, now it's exciting. You know, the house is great and people love it. And right. that was just a moment for me with that's beyond the profit, right? It's just, this is great. This is a lot of fun. And, uh, and I just, I don't know. I really like the emotional side of, of real estate. And, and that was yeah, cool I can tell. Yeah, yeah absolutely. man. Yeah, that was beautiful. Well, what, what, what type of things or factors come into play when you decide this is not the type of home that I want to invest in? So for a, for, from a flip standpoint, um, you've, you've got to look at the important stuff and you can fix anything. 
Uh, mm -hmm. But you want to make sure the neighborhood can sustain a house that's newly renovated, right? So when people say you want to buy the ugliest house in the black, there's some truth yeah. to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you don't want to be the nicest house and then try to improve it even further. So, uh, right. you know, you look for that. Um, you know, you've got to be an expert in your numbers. You got to know how much it costs to replace a furnace and a roof and put down some flooring and paint a wall. You've got to be an expert in your numbers. Hmm. Um, and then it's really, it just kind of comes down to math. You know, if I can purchase it for this much and I put this much into it, you know, I want a, this percent return on my money. Does this check that box or not? You know, and uh, and if it, and it's, it doesn't always, you know, it's, it's expensive to work on houses, especially now. And, and there's a lot of work going around and contractors prices are going up and material cost is, is mm -hmm. actually has come down a little bit, but it's still very high. It's, you know, relatively, yeah. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of risk with it. You know, I, you know, I buy a fair amount of houses and, you know, I like to think I'm pretty good at it, but you, you can miss things. You know, there can be, right. uh, you know, there's, there's just risk with it. So the reward at the end of the day has got to be there, um, to, to, to do it. So, so I would say, yeah, you know, you want to buy a house with plenty of potential. The neighborhood has to sustain it. And then the math has to make sense. So gotcha. Gotcha. Absolutely. Okay. No, it's, it's yeah, a fun business. Gotta... Yeah, definitely got to make sure the numbers make sense, obviously, because if you're looking into getting cash flow from it, you're going to make sure your expenses obviously aren't exceeding your, your, you know, your cash flow and the revenue that you can get in. So I'm just thinking of some things that you may have to consider, right? Uh, uh, potential uh, vacancy, obviously repairs, maintenance, uh, maybe some permits, things of that nature. Yeah. So for rental, that is, it's, it's similar, but different, right? <laughs> mm. Um so for rentals, yeah, you're going to have, you'll basically run your numbers uh, on all of your expenses to be a landlord. And you, you hit it out of the park with that. There's, um, you know, some CapEx, which is your capital expenditures. So things that wear out over time, you know, every 20 years, you might have to replace a furnace. You know, even if it was, you switched the filters out and, and took care of it, those just wear out. The roof is another one. The windows right. are another one. Things just mm -hmm. have, have a life, you know, so every month you got to put a couple of dollars away because eventually that roof's going to wear out. And as a landlord, you own the house, you're replacing the roof. Correct. Um, you've got repairs, which uh, if you, when you construct the house, you put good materials in it and you do a good job and you have good tenants that aren't too hard on it. You can, it's usually not too much, but you do have repair costs. Accidents right. happen. Like right. cars run into houses, right? <laughs> 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 they shouldn't, but they do. I, I would uh, say, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then, uh, I'm trying to think, you know, you have some snow maintenance, some lawn maintenance, if they're not single right, family right. homes, if they're multifamily, usually the landlord helps with those things. Yeah. Um, taxes, insurance. I mean, mm, you know, good one. Most, True. most houses have those. And then lastly, yeah. <laughs> uh, if you have a mortgage, you got to put the, the mortgage payment in there. So, mm -hmm. and, and I mentioned. I'm sorry to cut you off. I mentioned the vacancy yeah. thing too, because I feel like that's another aspect a lot of people don't necessarily think of. I mean, you can Absolutely. have a home and you can have it looking great, but there could be some periods of time where you have no one in there and you still have that mortgage that you have to pay. So it's there's times where you have to incorporate that money to cover that vacancy. Am, am I correct? You're you're spot on. Okay. Absolutely. No, if, if there's a tenant turnover, say someone signs a year lease, at the end of the year, there's probably going to be a month delay from when they move out to where you advertise it, you show it, and someone else moves in. So there's mm. effectively a month of lost revenue. So you have to have money in reserves to cover that month to pay the bill, you know, keep the lights on and the furnace running if you're in Michigan, <laughs> you yeah. know, uh, and just stuff like that. You've got to have money in reserves, and they call that vacancy. So you might put, mm -hmm. um, you know, 10% of your monthly revenue or the, the rent basically away and stash that aside. So when you do miss that month because of tenant turnover, you've got money there to pay it. You're, you're spot on, Kevin. Good point. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, since we are already in, in investing right now, can you speak on any maybe creative, unconventional, unique ways to begin into uh, investing in real estate or any popular ones, whatever you plan to share? <laughs> so, I guess I have two answers. <laughs> yes, please. Uh, I'll Come say on. For, for, for newbies, we touched on it a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. I, th I think uh, either we'll call it wholesaling or I'll say bird dogging, which is basically going out and learning how to assess properties 
as an investor, right? Even if you don't have money up front, uh, go out and try to find those deals, maybe find the off market stuff or, um, or just be able to provide solutions, right? Like the wholesaler that I worked with, I just bought the house that was going back um, to on foreclosure. Mm -hmm. They made $10,000 on the deal or ballpark that, uh, and they never owned it. They just found a, or found a seller, found a buyer and, and connected the two people. They just provided right. a solution and got paid 10 grand for not a whole lot of risk, <laughs> but, True. but they knew the numbers. They knew that there was equity in the house. They knew people, they had networked with, with well, with everybody, but with me to know that I'm a buyer. And so uh, wholesaling can be a way with, to get into it because you'll learn the system, you'll learn the numbers and you don't need a ton of money to, to, to play that role. Um, and the word bird dogging, it's just effectively the same thing, but you kind of work for an investor. So you mm. go out and find the deals. And, and if you bring an investor a deal, uh, they may throw you a few bucks for your efforts. And uh, usually that comes with like a, a base pay. And then you get rewards if one goes to closure. Gotcha. So oh, it's just a really good way to learn, learn the business. Um, okay. And then a unique one, I just wanted to bring this up too, is I <laughs> recently met a guy that owns I'll make it simple. I'll say he owns 15 houses and they're all on 15 year notes. So 15 year, 15 year mortgages. Okay. And so he'll refinance one house, get the 80% loan to value. And then he lives on that for a year. And then the year two, he refinances house number two and then house number three, the following year. And then he gets, once he gets to 15 years down the road, the first house is paid off and he refinances that one again. And so he just lives off the refinance money. And I thought that was, super wow. unique and i was like huh okay you know like yeah. i just thought that was interesting i had never thought of that and mm. like it's so simple and unique but i was like i just thought that was super interesting that's how he lives <laughs> man thank you for sharing that because it's it's always more than one way to do things right oh, to yeah. get stuff accomplished <laughs> and, and to and to find ways to make money that's the great the greatness of this country by the way but the fact that you can like refinance and reliving i mean that process is wow wow i, I just had to think about that because that is crazy yeah it's all about ultimately it's all about knowing the numbers like you said right if you right. can do the calculations and find out you know what a cash flow would be or what you can get from this what the expenses are here and with the interest rates from these loans and things like that and you can come out on top yeah i mean <laughs> you can you can probably do it in a bunch of different creative ways but Thank you for sharing that. We might inspire somebody here on the closing table, right? Hey, well, yeah. thank you. Thank you for uh, taking time out of your busy day to be here on the closing table. We appreciate that right now. If you have any last words and or want to tell the people how they can reach out to you, please do so now. Yeah, as last words, I'd say always be learning. You know, read every book you can, network with people, um, and uh, um, always do the right thing, you know, network with good people and, and just always be an advocate for doing the right thing. Cause your reputation in this business is, is, is huge and, uh, and spreads like wildfire. So I, I think that that's really been able to set me and some of the guys that I work closely with apart is, uh, we're, we're always looking to, for the win-win solution. Um, as far as getting a hold of me, I would love to meet with anyone. If you have questions about investing or, or uh, just buying real estate as a self. I'm, I'm definitely a passionate uh, realtor and I love to work with people. Uh, I will put maybe connect my Facebook and uh, my phone number in the description mm -hmm. of this video. We'll do all mm -hmm. that. Um, love to work with you. My name is Ryan Scully and uh, you can find me pretty easily on, on social media, just like Kevin did. Uh, but would love, love, love to connect with you. Don't hesitate to reach out. And um, yeah, Kevin, I appreciate your time and inviting me on here. I love to talk real estate. I always say yes to every opportunity. Yeah, man. And uh, I just really enjoy it. So appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. One last thing. I, I just thought yeah. about this. I don't think we covered your yeah. current market. Just for anybody who doesn't know, just tell them your current market. Current market say. as a realtor where I spend. Yes. So I'm in the Fenton area, Fenton, Michigan. Um, okay. But uh, I, I do all over the state. Um, okay. But uh, Fenton's definitely my specialty. And uh, I've done Ten thousand dollar houses up to million dollar houses. I, I kind of cover it all. So I'd love to work with you guys if if you're interested in buying and selling. Uh, I'm certainly an expert, and uh, I've got an awesome team that I work with, uh, including Window Still. I'll give you guys a shout out. Um, they do an excellent job with the media, uh, and I'm not just blowing smoke. I, genuinely, they I, that, it's one of my secret weapons. That's becoming not a secret anymore, but uh, it, it's 
Yeah, I guess I'm just doing a plug for Windows still now. I mean, everyone oh, no. <laughs> looks at Zillow and Realtor and, and they want to know the quality of pictures, right? They do an excellent job. The listing videos, the drone shots, all that stuff mm -hmm. absolutely sets your listing apart. And uh, I, I work with that team and they do an awesome, awesome job. So um, anyhow, cool. okay. Cool. Well, thank <laughs> you. I, I'll take that award and recognition on behalf of Brad. We appreciate that here yeah. at Windows Steel. Thank you, Ryan, for coming to the, uh, the closing table and dropping some gems for us. For our YouTube audience watching right now, if you've gotten this far in the video, we need you to do us a favor and hit the like button for us. Also, make sure you share the content and subscribe to our channel. And if you are listening on Apple, Spotify, or any other podcast platform, please do the same. Give us a like, five-star rating, and subscribe for our latest content. Ryan, I'd like to leave our audience with a question. Get them thinking before we leave out of here. Have you had any experience buying a property from a wholesaler if so what was it like if not would you consider it don't tell us now drop your comments below besides that we'll talk to you next time <laughs>